and welcome to the Elections Arena. Joining us in the arena today are Rachel Broyd, the foreign spokesperson and chair of the English campaign for Likud, and Meretz member of Knesset, Mosi Raz. So our first topic today is Israel's security. Over the course of the past week, we've seen tensions escalate on Israel's northern border with Hezbollah, we've seen drone attacks from Gaza, and we've seen an emboldened Iran expanding its reach and advancing its nuclear capabilities. So Rachel, let's start with you. It sounds like quite a security mess. Does the Likud have a clear strategy to deal with all these threats? First of all, thank you for having me. Thanks and for joining us. My pleasure. And regarding your question, look, Israel will respond based on our security needs. It's not a reactionary process. It's not because they shot drones or, you know, they were attacking here and there. Israel needs to respond to the time and the way that our security experts recommend. So we saw, for example, up north with Hezbollah, it took them years to build these tunnels, and Israel destroyed them in a couple of weeks. Um, Israel has attacked, you know, certain places, um, you know, in, whether it's in Lebanon or in Gaza that are targeted, and it's where we need to be, without just rushing into war because we feel we need to respond. And Israel is a mature country, and the prime minister has acted time and time again responsibly based on our security needs. And what would you say to the critics who argue that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's policies have led to a lack of deterrence in Gaza, for example? Uh, I think that they're wrong. Um, I think that Hamas knows very well that Israel has the capabilities to destroy them very quickly. We would rather not just, you know, go into Gaza and, you know, graze, graze mm -hmm. everything. Excuse me. And our goal is to respond the way we need to respond. Again, it's not about one side does this, so we're going to respond this way. It's not a, this is not tag. It's about what our security experts need, what our civilians need, and it's about preventing unnecessary wars. So, Mosi, same question. What's your take on this? Is Netanyahu doing enough uh, for Israel's security? And do you think that Benny Gantz, for example, could do better? First, a uh, small correction. I'm not a member of the Knesset anymore. Second, uh, Netanyahu is not doing enough. Um, doing enough is, all, is not only, I'm not pacifist, and if we have to need to, to respond, or if we have to act in a military way, sometimes it, it is needed, but it's not doing enough because it is not enough to use only the army in order to achieve security. We have to use the government, too. We have to use the foreign ministry, too. We have to use negotiations, too. We have to talk to other nations, too. We have to uh, uh, obey to international decisions, too. So the only thing that he's doing is the mil military-wise, and he's, the, he's doing okay. I don't think that we have to do more from a military uh, point of view. Now, what have he said by himself after five years uh, earlier, in 2014, after we failed in the war in Gaza? And I'm saying we failed because we actually let Hamas kill 70 Israelis, and while we killed more than 2,000 uh, uh, Palestinians with no use at all. He said, okay, but now we achieved the conditions to have uh, agreements with the uh, moderate Arab war in order to uh, uh, maintain security. And he failed doing that. For five, uh, five years later, we, we see that there, is no agreement. there are no agreements with no, no one new, a part of Egypt, Jordan, and the uh, Palestinian Authority. Uh, so nothing had happened. So it is not enough to use only the army. You have to use your brain too, you have to use uh, your uh, negotiations skills too, and we failed doing that. So I actually disagree. Um, wow, really? Shocking, right? Shocking. Um, I actually believe that Israel's international relations is stronger than it has been at any other time. You know, this is the only time that Israel is in, is, has great relations both with Russia and with the United States, with the European Union. The moderate Arab states, I agree that it's not as great as it could, as, as, as on paper um, one thinks maybe this would be perfect, full diplomatic relations. But it's not, you know, the world is not always about revolution. Sometimes it's about evolution. And I think that Israel's relationship with the moderate Arab states is much stronger than it used to be. I think that when you look at the fact that um, the United States canceled the 
you know, the dangerous Iran deal. You have other countries considering it. You have lots of other, um, you know, diplomatic international relationships that we didn't have before. But this is not disagreement with me. Uh, I said something dif different. Yeah, you read from... Uh, uh, okay, you read from your paper and it, it is okay. I can even... I don't, I don't have a paper. No, no, okay, I you, think, you remember I think, by heart. I no, think... anyhow, I, I, I even can agree with you for that. I don't say that everything with Netanyahu is bad. Yes, you are right, there are more diplomatic relations. I haven't, seen, I haven't said the opposite. But what I have said is that in order to secure our security in Gaza, uh, another embassy in Kigali is not relevant. But agreements with the Arab world, with the Palestinians, are relevant. And since the Israeli not... government uh, doesn't want to negotiate with the Palestinians and with, with, the, with the other states, since the Arab League Peace Initiative started or launched 17 or 16 years ago, 17 years ago in uh, Beirut, since the Israeli government doesn't want to negotiate, they have to provide something different but they have to provide something. That's interesting because the leaders of the Palestinian Authority have rejected every single offer no, of statehood. No, They've rejected not, uh, every option to come back to the serious. table. No, you're I think, there I think, I think table, overlooking the fact that the Palestinian Authority what did incites they reject? What did you know, they reject? violence against Jewish people, doesn't recognize can the you Jewish tell me, state. Can you tell me what did they, why did they reject? What? What did they reject? The, and, and every, they, when you say everything, they list re one. They rejected, first of all, the Palestinian and the Arab leadership rejected, has rejected deals since the founding of the State of Israel. No, no, they I'm also not talking rejected, about 1947. They, they also you were rejected not born the deal. and I was not they born. Reject, I mean, even President Bill Clinton. Even, even Bill Clinton. Even Bill Clinton blamed Yasser Arafat but uh, it was, for not, for yeah, not but accepting the deal. But it was 20 years ago. Let's try again. We tried so many Abbas times. Abbas has not come to the failed. table since. <laughs> Are you serious? Abbas wants to come. And he's saying, he's saying that again and again. We... He, Not he, me, but, he, but the Israeli he government doesn't want to do. He refused There's to send anybody to, to the Bahrain the conference. conference. Let's not pretend what that he is looking, the, that he is seeking job, peace. It's not true. He's not looking to, to have negotiations. The, That's why he's what, in what his 14th that, year uh, of his four-year term. What do you think about the Arab League Peace Initiative? There is, a, there, there is a peace initiative on the table. What is the reaction of the Israeli government? It is now 17 years and a half. Any reaction, even say no, even say interesting, even say okay, but we don't believe you, even say I don't understand. Okay, we you just trust told you. me 20 years ago with Bill Clinton, that's not a good example, and you're bringing me something from 17 no, years but, ago. No, but but they but they reapprove that every year again and again, and the Israeli government is ignoring them, and I, I understand why. The Israeli government doesn't want to deliver an agreement, not because they don't want peace. Of course, they do want peace, but they don't want to pay the price for peace, which is, you know, moving some settlers from their homes. Or no peace. I think pretending that the Palestinian Authority and or Hamas are just peace-seeking, loving individuals that are, they you know, are not, as honest. They are it's more not, than Netanyahu. I absolutely do not agree with it. No, I know what, that what, I mean, don't. Hamas is a terrorist organization. I'm not talking about Hamas. I think that they're going to have Palestinian the authority. I mean, that's why, you know, UNRWA is being, is, is being uh, investigated. That's, so, why, so that's could, why the Palestinian so Authority is constantly policy. being slammed for preaching anti-Semitism. The Palestinian Authority named streets after terrorists. They... They name schools after terrorists and pretending and we, that people. And we, we do not. <laughs> we do not. The state of the state of yeah. Israel does so not. So you have go. to you have to you have to study the, the history of this country in order to know that. I we know the history. Call names I know the history of streets and of. Uh, I know of, the name. Of, right, of, of, I know Israeli history quite of, well. I don't need the patronization. Have you, have you right, about let's wrap Feinstein up and move on to or about our next Hinkis topic. Or about others. I know. I know the entire. Okay, history. so you know that we do. All right, let's move on don't to agree. our next topic. Why don't I agree? You don't believe Israel... Uh I don't believe Israel praises martyrs. The state Not of Israel in 2019, not. but 60 years ago, All yes. right, let's move on to our next topic. And now we're moving back to politics. We are about a week away from a second round of elections, and the Knesset today failed to pass the cameras bill, which aimed to prevent voter fraud by allowing surveillance in polling stations. The bill was pushed forward by the Likud, though the attorney general and many other officials expressed opposition to the bill. Critics of the move are saying that it is, in fact, just another political maneuver by the prime minister to bolster his base and improve voter turnout. So, Rachel, the bill ultimately failed, but why the urgency to pass this bill in the first place? Um, 
let's let's step back a little bit. In the previous election, um, an Israeli law allows um, parties to have um, members, representatives watching in the polls. They're at polling stations. That's the Israeli law. Could be different. Um, in the last election, there were many ex many uh, cases of fraud, and even the you know, you know, Judge Meltzer, who heads the election committee, acknowledged there were issues of fraud um, that were brought by the cameras that were provided by Likud to certain um, certain supervisors. And this time, you know, Likud assumed that the law would be the exact same and the decision would be the same that Judge Meltzer ruled last time. And I think that at the end of the day, there is a fraud problem, and that fraud problem needs to be dealt with before the elections, not after. And I think that it, it would be better for Israel to come along and say, hey, we're going to prevent fraud and not just respond to fraud after the fact. And the reason why it has been, why it is so important to do it now and not, you know, maybe a month ago was because the election committee took their time deciding what their decision was going to be. And the Likud would like to prevent all this fraud. And it's, you know, it could be in many sectors. It could be in many polling stations. That's why Likud wanted a law that acknowledged that every single polling station would have cameras. So we have cameras everywhere, and you don't need special equipment. It can be done on a phone. It can be a simple camera. And I think that overlooking that, the, the reality and the fact that there is fraud is, is you know, people are, are, you know, either lying to themselves or they're misreading the data. I mean, the fraud last time could have, you know, had, had the fraud been dealt with properly last time, it could be that there would have been enough for a right-wing coalition then, because you know it seems, uh, at least under preliminary results, that Balad would not have passed, and Yamin Khadash would have made it in, and we would have had a, a sixty, you know, a coalition of sixty-one, and we wouldn't have needed these elections. But because nobody was willing to deal with the fraud as it was staring them in the face, and even Meltzer has said that it's uh, sorry, excuse me, Judge Meltzer has said that it needs to be dealt with. This is the only way to deal with it. Mossi, what are your thoughts on the bill? I think it's a nice show. First, I want to say I'm not against cameras, and even the committee approved cameras, but with some conditions. Second, I want to talk about the frauds. The Likud party and the committee uh, brought to the police evidences about places that there were fraud, and yes, they found that there, is a, there was a fraud made by Likud party, and without that, the Likud has to be one less in the Knesset, and Yaduta Torah, the, uh, how do you call them? Uh, United, the, United uh, Judaism. Judaism. Yeah. Should have one more. This is what the police founded. Yeah, I know the Prime Minister is talking about things that are not the truth. Now, if one wants to change the law, you have to know, I was a member of the Knesset twice. The, uh, when the Knesset decides to go to election, you cannot have even one meeting of the Knesset talking about weather without agreement of opposition and coalition. You cannot have one meeting de decide, de to decide to, to pass two million to a hospital or a school without agreement of opposition of coalition. This was since the establishment of the state. And now they come, and in the last minute, eight days before elections, they want to change the, the election slow. Everybody understand that this is the fraud. And this is why not only people from right wing and uh, not only people from left wing and opposition voted against, even member of Knesset Folkman that is actually part of the Likud. He voted again against, and this is why they didn't have the majority in the committee. Now, if you ask me, I don't think that uh, Netanyahu really wants this, uh, this law uh, to pass. He wants, this is part, this is part of the propaganda, if the, this is part of the campaign, saying the Arabs go to the, to the polls, the Arabs f uh, making fraud, the Arabs cheat, the Arabs and the Arabs and the Arabs. This, this is the hatred of Netanyahu. Most of the people us unfortunately hate. Like we see in Europe and US, the same, the same hatred. And uh, it mobilized uh, votes again and again. He saw that uh, f five months ago. He saw that in 2015. Hatred is uh, good for the voters. So, Rachel, how do you respond to Look, this? Look, I think that uh, it's ironic when a left-wing party screams and shouts that people hate, because at least the way that I experience it, I was assaulted by a left-wing activist in 2015 for wearing a Likud shirt. 
They threw, yeah, they threw water bottles at me. They yeah, threw but, stuff. But I see my, he, my colleague was think, assassinated, which think, is a little bit worse than uh, being assaulted. I agree with you that being dead is worse than and, uh, being, uh, than, than, happened, than, than being assaulted. It happened however, twice, not only however, once. However, I think that the idea that, you know, hatred, uh, you know, they're screaming and shouting hatred. There's no incitement. Incitement is about no a call to a crime. I think no that when you have that, the, you know, the, the left loves to use this, you're inciting violence, you hate, you hate, you hate. But every single left-wing campaign that I've experienced, and I acknowledge that I haven't been in Israel nearly as long as a former member of Knesset that's sitting right across from me, Every single election, I see people going, oh, the right wing, they're not as civilized, they're not as smart, no, they just I kiss mezuzahs. No, no, you know, I never said you know, that. I never say it's, that. It's, 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 if you ask me, Netanyahu is smarter than maybe, any maybe other Maybe not people. you personally, but the campaign, you see numerous people, you see people on TV going, uh, you know, the right wing, they're just, you know, right wingers, they're just, yeah, you know, you backwards, Rachel, backwards with, baboons. With all and due I think respect, you cannot compare hatred of prime minister to hatred of an actress who is saying something in the street. And this is what you're doing okay. now. No, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying that the left wing the side fact that thoughts. you were assaulted Rachel, final to the I fact have to that move on my to colleagues were assassinated by right wing people. I was, I was right, not comparing stop. the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin. But you did, I, and no, not only Yitzhak Rabin, I Emil Greenzweig. I'm saying that the hatred that the, that the left likes to spew, and then they complain when people come to them and say, hey, what about the issues that are going on in your own camp? I just find it very ironic. All right. So our last topic for today, we'll address one of the key issues surrounding the election campaign, and that is the rift between the ultra-Orthodox and secular populations in Israel. So turning to you, Mossi, what is your take on this issue, right? Israel Beitenu Zavigdor Lieberman has thrust this issue into the spotlight, this election campaign. He's made it the central issue of his campaign. What's your take on it? First, uh, I don't know. I guess that this is something that uh, Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Lieberman are doing together. Mr. Lieberman uh, is making his campaign, uh, and by the way, this is hatred campaign, yes, his campaign against the ultra-Orthodox ultra parties. And yes, there, are, there is uh, hatred in Israel not only towards uh, Palestinians, but towards ultra-Orthodox. And he gets, uh, at least in the public opinion polls, he gets a lot of, uh, he's going to get a lot of votes uh, for that. He is not left-wing. He was never left-wing. Um, and um, the settlers on the other side, they have their party. And uh, I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm not a candidate to vote on this party, but I understand what they want. Uh, the problem with uh, Mr. Lieberman, that if you vote for him, you don't know what is what are his intentions? Does he going to support Netanyahu or Gantz? I believe Netanyahu, but you can never know. You can never know, and uh, we will have to, I mean, at, at the last 25 years, he was with Netanyahu. But one says, Netanyahu says, that he and is not And yet twice anymore. he's brought down, essentially resigned, led to yeah, elections, yeah, but the and twice have done the, same. the government. But the settlers have done the same in 92 and in 99. I mean, the right wing, they uh, brought down the Netanyahu, uh, Shamir's government and then Netanyahu's government. And Rachel, uh, Lieberman has openly called for a unity government without the ultra-Orthodox parties. Will the Likud sit in a on a government like this? What's your... The Likud is not interested in a unity government. We have said it time and time again. Likud is interested in forming a right-wing coalition. Um, and we hope to get there, you know, with our natural coalition partners. And this election, we've seen a lot of talk, or this past election and this second time around, we've seen a lot of talk, uh, a lot of controversy over some of the right-wing allies that Netanyahu has aligned himself with. Can you talk about that a little bit? What's your take on it? Look, I, you know, amongst the right-wing parties, there's not always agreements. We don't always agree on everything, just like on the left, not all the left-wing parties um, agree. Um, but overall, we believe that in order to accomplish our main right-wing goals, we have to sit with the right-wing coalition. And, you know, unity governments have shown to not be as successful. So we're not interested in forming a unity government. We're not interested in having a government, you know, a left-wing government. We are interested in forming a right-wing government. Um, and I affirmatively disagree with uh, what Moti said. I think that Lieberman has joined the left. Um, and while in the past maybe he has been more to the right, 
it's it's clear from numerous things that he has said that he's interested in recommending guns, that he's he signed a surplus agreement with Kachov um, or the Blue and White Party, excuse me, mm -hmm. and that's his that's his goal. And I think that you know last time Lieberman said he was going to recommend guns, said he was sorry, excuse me, said he was going to recommend the prime minister, is, said he was going to sit with the prime minister, and then didn't. At the end of the day, people voted for Lieberman because they wanted him to join with the right wing government, and he didn't. So, you know, people that say, oh, but he'll, he's going to go with the prime minister again, he's saying he's not. Let's take the man at, at, at his word, which is he won't. But as you said earlier, earlier he said that he will support prime minister, and he didn't. So maybe now when he says he, he, he will not, Look, he signed, he signed a but surplus anyhow, agreement with Blue but and anyhow, White. But the, so the, the, the fact that he has this agreement with Blue and White maybe says the reality that Blue and White moved to the right wing. They don't support Netanyahu because Netanyahu is corrupted. But if you take their uh, opinions, they are very close to the Likud right, party. So they are not close to Labour. One statements. final question. Right, sure. looking at the numbers right now, we see that neither side, neither the right wing nor the left wing, has enough numbers to get to the 61 uh, seats needed for a coalition. Do you think we might be headed for a third round of elections? Uh, I think that the public does not want a third round of election, um, and Likud is going to do everything it can to be able to form a right-wing coalition. And the the facts on the ground is that you're right, which is that the polls show that we're not going to we're not going to win. And therefore, every single person who wants Prime Minister Netanyahu to be the prime minister should vote Likud. That's it. It's not voting for small you know parties that aren't going to pass a threshold, or for smaller parties, or you know who knows. It's if you want. Prime Minister Netanyahu to be the Prime Minister, the safest bet is to vote Likud. Right. We no longer have that privilege to vote for others. Mostly your final Everything bus. is possible, but if I, uh, I, I, I believe since the differences between Gantz, Netanyahu and Lieberman are very small, if you ask what they think, they think the same, I think they are going to form a coalition together and then you need very uh, large opposition from the left to this right-wing government. All right. Well, that's all the time we have in the elections arena. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. And remember to follow us on Facebook at Israel English News, on Twitter at ILTV News, and on our website at ILTV.TV. I'm Madar Gavay Lazi. Until next time.